All right. So we have this question here, an application question again, question two we're going to look at in the application. So here's a floor plan. So it's a floor plan of a building. So looking at it from a bird's eye view with the following dimensions, because it's obviously the floor. It's a six sided shape. One, two, three, four, five, six is what we're referring to with the six sided shape, where all the corners are at right angles. Now, while that's really important that obviously all the corners are at right angles is because we know that this wall is parallel with this wall and this wall these walls are parallel together as well so we can understand that we can understand some lengths if the total area of the building shaded in yellow is 24 meters squared find the perimeter of the shape well the perimeter of the shape well we just got to add up all the lengths so if this is x and we don't know what this is but this is 4x plus 1 so we know that this length of this wall must be 3x plus one because x plus whatever needs to equal 4x plus one so that's got to be 4x plus one in total this length would have to be 3 plus x so this wall would be 3 plus x so the total perimeter of this is going to be x starting here plus 3 plus 3x plus 1 plus x, so I'm just working around systematically, plus, I'm gonna go down here, 4x plus one, plus 3x, plus, sorry, three plus x, and then I'm back at where I started. So I've gone x plus three, plus 3x plus one, plus x, plus 4x plus one, plus three x, three plus x. I can add those all together now, collect like terms. I've got one x, four x's, five x's, 9x's, 10x's, 3, 4, 3 plus 1 is 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's the perimeter, 10x plus 8. I don't know what x is. Now, how am I going to decide what x is? Well, it's given me an actual dimension. It's told me the total area of the building is 24, but I want to find the perimeter. Well, I've got a formula for perimeter, but I don't know what X is. Like if X was one, I'd know it'd be 18. If X was two, I know it'd be like 28. If X was three, I know it would be 38. So I've got to try and find out what it is. Now I can do that by knowing the area. Well, I know the area of the shape. That has to equal 24 you know, square meters. What is the area of this shape? Well, let's look at it. Well, I can break this down into two sections. We've got this section here, which I've got three times X. So the area actually equals three times X. And then I've got this section, which is because it's just a rectangle, right? So it's width times length. So it's going to be X times. This is plus. So we've got this area, which is this one, A, area A. Um, so really what we're trying to do here is, let me just rewrite this so you guys understand, the total area will equal section A plus section B is what I'm trying to say. So if we actually write that as a formula, well, section A is length times width. Length times width is going to be 3x or 3 times x. So we've got A, the area equals 3 times x plus, we've got to add this in, which is x times now, remember when you're doing times, if you're times in this whole thing, we've got to use it, um, we've got to put it in brackets because you need to distribute it because you want to go X multiplied by both of them. So this is similar to our array model that we introduced. And that's our formula. So that's going to simplify to area equals 3X plus 4X squared plus X. So now... I can write that and simplify that and collect my like terms. You always collect your like terms. So it's going to be 4x squared plus 4x. Now we know that the area for this was actually 24. Okay. So that's what the area is. So all I've done here is substituting what the area is. So first of all, we figured out what the area of this is, 3x. This is x times 4x, and we added those together. We expanded it, close our last terms, and then we said, well, we know the area is 24, so I subbed in the area for A equals 24, not section A, by the way. 
So that's all we've done so far. Now we've got to use what we introduced last lesson, which is a bit of the null factor law. Now the null factor law is because if I'm here and I'm trying to think, okay, what can X be to make it equal 24? Now you could do trial and error here, which is fine. So you could put in one, four times one squared. Well, one squared is one, four times one is four, plus this would be four times one is four. So it'd be eight, that would be right. Now if it was two, that would be two squared would be four, four times four is 16, two times, uh, four times two is eight. So you know that that is an answer. It has to be true. It has to be two, right? I mean, that's what we're looking for. So you could do trial and error. So for example, you know, if X equals one, does the left hand side equal the right hand side? Now I wouldn't do this typically, but that's, let's just do it. 24 equals four, one squared plus four times one. That's going to equal eight. And 24 does not equal eight. Therefore, X does not equal one, right? Now I'm just going to continue on just over here. Then you might try the next number up, you know. So 24, uh, so we're going to try X equals two. 24 equals four, two squared plus four, lots of two. So remember you do bid mass, so you can do indices first, four times four plus four times two. So that's gonna be 16 plus eight, and that equals 24. So what we realize here is that the left-hand side, I shouldn't have done equals 24, four. So it's four plus eight, 16 plus eight, sorry I should say, equals 24. If 24 equals 24, you got the left hand side. When the left hand side equals the right hand side, I can prove that, yeah, if you put 2 in for x, therefore what x will equal 2 is correct because you've got the right, you know, if you put it in, it balances out, it makes a true statement. Um, again, how that will work when you relate back to here, if you put 2 into here, it's going to give you 24. So 3 times 2 is 6. This would be two. This would be four times two, which is eight. Eight plus nine, so that'd be two lots of nine, which is 18. 18 plus six, and that's what we've got in our formula. Don't forget, 16 plus eight, um, which is the areas. So that's one way to go about it, trial and error. Now, I personally wouldn't go about that. Um, There's this other, which you introduced, normally introduced it a bit later on in year 10, but let's do it now anyway, which we call the null factor law, okay? Now, literally, it says it in, in the word, okay? Uh, a null. What does null mean? Null means nothing. Factor. A factor law. So this is what we do. We make the we make the factor null. Now a factor. If I asked you like what are factors of twelve, you would say like oh they're like one and tw one two three, four, six, and 12. Now, remember we looked at array models and array, a factor makes a rectangle. Okay, so when we actually did factorize things, we found like the factors as well. So that could be, for example, you know, six and two. Um, so they are factors and there's no remainders. We also did the factors as well. So what you're trying to do with a factor, we need to factorize this, okay? So we're gonna factorize and that's why we call it factorizing because we did cover that in previous lessons as well. Um, so, for example, you know, if you've got x squared plus 5x plus 6, you can factorize that to x plus 3 and x plus 2 because there's no remainders. That would give you an x squared here. That would give you 3x here. That would give you 2x here. And this would give you 6. Remember, that's why you're looking for a multiplication of this number, because it's 3 times 2 gives you 6. And you're looking for the addition of that, because it comes from the expansion of x times 3 and x times 2, which gives you, you know, x times 3 gives you 3x, and you're adding those. So we're looking for a product of 6 and a sum of 5, and that's how you get your factors. So with this question, um, what we want to do with the null factor law is we want the equation, which was originally, let's go back to where we were, so let's just go through a bit of trial and error. 24, so remember we got to, we just, we, we, we figured out what the length, what the area was, and then we simplified it, and we got to this section, which is 24 equals 4x squared plus 4. Now what we're going to do, 4x, we're going to put 0 on here. Why are we going to put 0 on here? 
Because before, when we tried to make the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, now we want to know when x equals 0. Like, we want this side of the equation equals 0. So it's going to be 4x squared plus 4x minus 24. Now, again, if you put in 2 here, this section is going to give you 24. Like, we showed that this gives you 24. So 24 minus 24 gives you 0, right? So we can still see that x is correct because you're going to go... 4 times 4, 16, plus 4 times 2 is 8, is 24. Add those together, minus 24 gives you 0. So it's still going to work. But an easier way is to factorize it here. And this is why we did um, this is why we did all, all the factorizing to help you guys with this application questions. If we factorize this, the first thing always to do is take out your common factor. We can take out 4. So we're left with x squared plus 4. Uh, sorry, whoops, plus x minus 6. Now you can factorize this. 0 equals 4. If you factorize this, this is going to become x plus 3, x minus 2, right? Because if you expand this, that gives you negative 6. That'll give you 3x minus 2x will give you 1x, and you got the x squared. So now we can use what we call the null factor law. I want to make one of these factors equate to nothing. Because if you think about this, you've got some numbers here. And why are we taking that 4? 4 times anything times anything. Now, if you've got something times something times something, if you want to make that equal 0, how could you make it equal 0 if you're timesing by numbers? One of these numbers needs to be 0. Because if you go like 4 times 100 times 0 is 0. 4 times anything would give you any answer, but times it by 0 gives you 0. If you always times anything by 0, it gives you 0, right? Like, you know, you can make the most ridiculous question. Um, you know, you could just make um, a really, really long question, uh, you know, times like you could put a fraction in there and be really annoying and then just do times by 0. But if these are all times by each other and then you got this times by 0, well, you could add, you know, multiply all these, and when you get to times by zero, you're like, oh, it just equals zero anyway. So what we're trying to do is, because we, we did here, and the trick here is to make this equal zero. So you put all your algebra terms on here, and we only do this, we mainly do this when we've got like an x squared term. Take out your common factor. You always take out your common factor, as we've explained in previous ones. And because it wants to equal zero, well, all I need to do is make one of these factors equal zero. So how can I make this equal zero? What would I need to substitute in for x? Well, you need to make two, because two minus two would give you zero, right? This, if you put in two, would give you five. Four times five is 20, times zero is zero. Ah, oh, so therefore, x must equal two, right? Another number it could equal though, because hopefully you might be going, but hang on a moment. You only made this one equal zero. You could also, Mr. Rainbow, you could also make this one equal zero, right? Because you could go for four times zero times anything. What would that make it? Well, what would you have to put in there? Well, to put in here, you'd have to put in x equals negative three. Because if you put in negative three plus three is zero. Negative three minus three would give you negative five. Now, that would also be a solution. So both of these would be possible answers. Two and negative three, because they both make it zero. Um, I mean, if you go back to our original equation here, if you put in negative three, negative three squared is nine, four lots of nine is 36, and that's gonna make four lots of negative three is gonna be negative 12. 36 minus 12 is gonna be 24. 24 minus 24 equals zero, so it works. Um, so that's why we call it the null factor law. We factorize it, and then you make one of your factors, these things are the factors, equate to nothing. So really what you're trying to do mathematically is if you think about what you're trying to do, you're actually, and if it gets a bit tricky, really all you're trying to do is on the first step, we're trying to make that factor, x minus 2, equal nothing. So you could almost solve this algebraically. Well, I know that x needs an equal 2. And then on the second factor, we have x plus 3. We want that to equal nothing because if you've got anything times 0 times anything, that will give you 0, right, if it's all multiplied. 
So it was a cool little trick someone found out. Um, you know, we're talking about years and years of massive learning here, um, and they realized that. So you can just you're trying to make that equal zero. So therefore, it's going to be x equals negative three. Now the beauty, this would normally be where your factors would be, like um, sorry, where you know not your uh, yeah where um, this would be the well, if for it to equal a uh, solution for x for this equation, it would be x equals two and x equals negative three. In this case, though, we've got to make sure, does that make sense? So you've got to go back to the original question. Now, if I put x equals negative 3 in here, how does that make sense? So if this has a length of negative 3, I mean, does that make sense? Because uh, this is 3. Minus 3, that's going to have no length, right? I mean, it's not going to exist. So... There's only one solution for this, which is x equals 2. I mean, it has two solutions when we work it out, but you got to come back and see if it makes sense because you need area, right? I mean, if you had no width along here at all, you can't have an area of 24 metres squared. So that's kind of what we're looking at. So we know now that we found out that x equals 2. So we know that x needs to be greater than 0 because, I mean, you can't have it, you know, negative length. Like, I, you can't build a wall negatively. So... Um, we, we know that we are so yep so we know that you know in this case um we can write um so what we can do is we can write um x needs to be greater than zero therefore x equals two is the solution so that is the value for x now we haven't answered it we've just found out what x is to make this Total error 24. Now we can check it two times, three times two, which we did before. This would be two. Three times two would be six. That gives you this. This would be two. This would be two, which would make it eight. Eight plus one would be nine. So the area of that, would be, that length of that would be nine. Two by nine is 18. 18 plus six is 24. Now remember, we need to do the perimeter at the start. We added the perimeter and we already figured out in terms of x. So the beauty of this now is because we know x is two, it's going to be 10 times two plus eight. So therefore, the perimeter is 28 metres, because obviously we're dealing with metres squared, so the perimeter is 28. And that's the answer to that one. I love that one. That was good.